Hey there, Internet. We're back. To my left is Jake. And to my right is Niall. And this is the Readiness Report. So there has been a manufacturing delay with Wave 2 of Armada from Fantasy Flight Games. And as an apology, Fantasy Flight has selected some stores to host this Massing at Solus tournament for Armada Wave 2. Awesome. So our store was chosen as one of these locations. So Jake and I saw this as an opportunity to take a closer look at the new ships coming out for Wave 2 of Armada. In this wave we introduced four new ships. The ISD, the Raider, the MC-30C, and the MC-80, and Rogues and Villains. So the Rogues and Villains pack comes with uh, four ships, for, or four squadrons technically, for each the Empire and the Rebellion. You have um, Dengar in the Punishing one, you have the Houndstooth one by Boss, uh, of course Boba Fett in Slave one, you have IG-88 in the IG-2000, uh, you have Nim in the Havoc. Havoc. You might not recognize him. He's from Star Wars Naboo Fighter. Oh, yeah, because that was such a great popular game that everyone loved. Uh, you have Jan Orris flying the Hawk 290. You have um, Han Solo, of course, in the Millennium Falcon. Who would have guessed? And you have Dash Rendar in the Outrider with considerably better artwork than that promo card they did for X-Wing <laughs> Forum. Uh, with Wave 2 also comes some changes to the game. The game will be played at 400 points, uh, as well as the tournament... Uh, game length will go from two hours to two and a half hours, um, which you know is been doesn't sound like a lot, but it really is. Do, well, it doesn't sound a lot like it doesn't sound like a lot to you and me. You know, we're miniatures players. We've been pl we've been playing Flames of War and Warhammer games like that for ages. Yeah. You know, to a lot of the people who got into miniature gaming as X Wing as their first miniatures game and crossed over to Armada. It seems like a long time because a lot of those a lot of those players were card players, and two and a half hours is a long time for a single tournament game. Yeah, it's it's like mentally exhausting. Yeah, but I mean, if you see how much damage these things can take, it, it's going to take a while. Yeah. Notice they didn't increase the turn length or the turn uh, total number of turns at all. Ooh, they did it's not. just the limitation on the game length uh, at tournaments. So the large ships introduce the contain to defense token. This does is it when you're dealt a face up, you can spend this token and cancel it. You still take the damage, but you're not fa taking a face up critical. You're not taking the standard critical effect. Right, right, because you can still activate critical effects by cards. Right, uh, which the upgrade that allows you to do two face up. Uh, criticals still have face of damage cards. Still happens. That's not a standard critical effect. No. You still take both those cards. Yeah. So an interesting thing uh, that they've done with the rebels in this wave is uh, there's a whole bunch of new upgrade cards that through adding bonus dice, letting you reroll things like that, uh, emphasize you using your side batteries against the enemy. Uh, this allows you to do, you know, um, like pincer attacks uh, and you know, really makes it easier for you to always get shots off with your stronger batteries, unlike the Imperials who need to be nose first at the enemy all the time. Yes. So in wave two uh, is the ship everyone's been waiting for since this game came out, the Imperial class Star Destroyer. Woo! Uh, it's the one everyone's been asking about since the game came out. When will I get to play an Imperial class? Um, hopefully, once you see the thing in real life, I mean. You'll, you'll see it in this video. I'm sure you've seen pictures from Gen Con and GTS earlier this year of the ship, but until you see it in person, the pictures really don't do justice to just how big this ship is. It's it is massive. massive. It's like Jacob's fingertip span, which is impressive. Um, it's just an absolutely massive ship. Of course, the model looks gorgeous like everything else that Fantasy Flight's done for the Star Wars miniatures in X-Wing and Armada. Uh, some like really cool things that I think came out with Imperial Class Star Destroyer though um, are this one's the support officer which you discard the card and you discard your command stack which means you redo all of your command dials it's good to have when you have three of them 
Yeah, it's good to have when you have three of them. And uh, if you, you know, part way into it, you just go, you know what, I really screwed this up. Ah, just reset button. Right. Uh, another really cool one that came out was the redundant shields. Uh, it just lets you get back a shield every turn. You don't have to do anything for it, it just happens. Mm. Um, then the two uh, really cool title cards for it. Uh, the first one is the Avenger, which what that does is when it attacking, it prevents your defender from using exhausted defense tokens. Which, you know, part once you're most of the way into a turn, you know, and your opponents spend most of their defense tokens, then you attack it with uh, the, the Avenger. Avenger and just pummel away at them. Hopefully destroy a ship that way. Uh, the other one is Relentless, and that lowers the number of command dials you have to have by one. You still have a command rating of three, but which you're only important. working with two command dials. Yeah, that's that's pretty Which good. is really crazy for an Imperial class Star Destroyer. Next we're talking about the Home 1 expansion. And this, the new ti- one of the new title cards is the Defiance. And much like Paragon, you get to add a die of any color, but unlike having attacked that ship, Defiance allows you to add a die of any color as long as the Defender is activated. Next is Waylix Blissix. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. but Probably uh, not. It's made up anyways. Uh, he's really cool. He allows you to regain a spent defense token. Uh, really important late game. Yeah. Especially on big ships. Yeah, and especially when you have uh, things that prevent you from spending exhausted uh, defense tokens. Yeah. And then finally, a uh, new upgrade card in this is Cluster Bomb. Now this this roll, after you're attacked by uh, a squadron, you roll four blue dice and add hits and crits. It's like a super counter. Yeah, it's pretty devastating. Uh, so the other Imperial ship coming out in this wave is the Imperial Raider class Corvette, which everyone saw with uh, Star Wars X-Wing. The engine manifold is painted. Yes, the engines are painted on this version of it. Uh, To be fair, it's a lot less paint this time around. Very true. So uh, there's two really cool cards that came out with this one. The first being the title card, the Instigator. Now what this does is it allows the Raider to treat all enemy squadrons at the proper range to be... uh, They are engaged, counted as being engaged by two additional squadrons is how it's worded, which... Um, the the funny wording is because it's a ship, so the ship itself is not engaged, but it is engaging enemy squadrons. And the reason why two additional uh, squadrons is for ships with grit who can ignore one. One. So uh, that way your raider can uh, serve as a very effective sh- uh, screen against enemy fighter squadrons, as well as enemy um, rogues and villain squadrons that have grit with them. Uh, the other uh, really cool card that came with the Raider is the Quad Laser Turrets, which give it a counter. So, realistically, you can replace uh, two or three squadrons with the Raider very well, which is handy because that way, you know, if... Freeze up some points. Well, if you, you know, if you're playing someone who didn't bring any squadrons... It's not wasted. Yeah, it's not wasted. You know, as an Imperial player, you're basically bringing TIE Fighters just to... Uh, defend yourself against X-Wings and Mm Y-Wings. Now, with the Raider, if your opponent doesn't bring any X-Wings and Y-Wings, they're not wasted points. You can still do stuff with the Raider. You know, there's there's a bunch of cards that add or um, give bonuses to black dice, so, you know, it really can get up close and still do some damage to enemy ships. Yeah, the only wasted wasted points are the the points you spent on the counter stuff or the title, but that's insignificant next Com- yeah, to compared having to a ship the instead. Power of the dark side. That's not where you're going with that. Oh, poop. So some of my favorite upgrades from the MC30 are Rapid Reload, which gives you an additional black die on your left and right. Right. In addition to the three you already get. That's more of that uh, encouraging side shots from the Rebels. The Assault Proton Torpedo. Now this one, this is uh, this breaks contain. So if you get a black, uh, black critical, you can resolve it to get a face-up critical damage. So this goes right through contain. Uh, we have Ordnance Expert, which with all those black dice, it allows you to re-roll all those black dice, making them even deadlier. And then General Riken, which you might recognize from Empire. I don't know. If yep. I, I did at first. I don't know if you will. Uh, General Riken allows your ships to get one last activation in before they die. 
if they are destroyed. In addition to unique squadrons, too. Right, so named squadrons. Uh, and, and all of your well. ships. And all of those named rogues and villain squadrons. So, uh, in addition to the um, four new ships coming out for Wave 2, there's the Rogues and Villains pack, which I'm wondering if maybe Fantasy Flight realized that not a whole lot of people were focusing very much on fighters, because <laughs> I feel like this is going to change that drastically. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to go over each individual squadron here, because... They're all good. They're, they're amazing. all amazing uh, take them. Take they take they as many things, as you can. They do things like let you move and shoot in the squadron phase. Let you uh, Han shoots first. Han shoots first. Han Han moves in the ship phase is what Jacob is referring to. Um, the uh, yeah, good bombers, you, good, good anti fighter. fighter. Yeah, um, they let you. You know, you can all, You have to be engaged by more than one squadron um, to be. To, to bog to them down, moving, yeah, you know, um, things like that. They're just they're all really great. I recommend just looking at all. Read of them. the cards. They're yeah. they're they're good. Um, you know, and I really think that this is going to change how people use fighters going forward. They'll probably use them a lot more aggressively, and they will probably uh, be using them more frequently. Yeah, I've, I've I hope actually so. seen. People at tournaments completely forego squadrons entirely. And I hope this changes it because I, I love squadrons. Like, yeah, the game is about the big ships, but we're gonna have a couple of Tie Fighters and a couple of X Wings. Only a couple. Yeah. Well, I mean, think about it. There's only like four squadrons at the Battle of Endor. Exactly. Right? Exactly. It, it, like, someone brought that up, and I was like, "Holy crap, really?" Because that's yeah. four stands of fighters. Yep. That's it. And most of my games, I I use way more than that. Still a really big game of X Wing. Yeah, it is. So that concludes our thoughts uh, as of right now on Wave 2. I'm sure we'll have a lot more as we actually play a, uh, a lot with them. Uh, if you're watching this video before the Massing at Solst event weekend, uh, go check that out. You can potentially go home with one of the new expansions if you take Top 4. Mm -hmm. If you're watching it after the Massing at Solst weekend, check out or uh, take keep an eye out for our Massing at Solst commentary video. Uh, where we will be uh, discussing the finer points of tactics used with these new ships. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. That way you can be updated when other videos like this one come out. And check out the other videos on our YouTube channel. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and G+. Bye. So, am I the only one who thinks it's just completely absurd that any Rebel fighters made it out of the Battle of Endor? I mean, there was, like... They specifically talk about those four squadrons. They show all, like, 16 ships yeah. that fly in. You know, it shows them, like, weaving through the, yeah. the fleet. and The rebel, sh the rebel fleet's tiny. Did you hear that? They shut down the main reactor. We'll be destroyed for sure. This is madness. What are you doing?